Hi there. If we've never met before, my name is Whitney with Four Sparrow Homestead. We are a family of four who are homesteading and homeschooling our two children ages eight and five. Now, I don't know about you, but I love school. I loved school as a child, and one of my favorite things was the first day of school when I had a little box with brand new pack of crayons and markers and everything was just so fresh and so new and I was so excited to get to school and use all of those school supplies. Well, nothing has changed. I still love school and I love school supplies. Mardell's is one of my absolute favorite places to go and it can be pretty dangerous for me. I tend to go overboard. I tend to think that I need certain things that I end up never using. And so I don't know if you're like me, but if you are, homeschooling can be pretty overwhelming when you start to set up either a classroom or decide how you're gonna do school, whether your children are gonna be at their own seats or you're gonna school at the family table. No matter which way you decide to go, supplies are pretty important. And it would have really helped me to have maybe researched a little bit more about what was necessary to have and what was just extra. And so I wanted to share with you what our top homeschool supplies are. The things that we use on a daily basis and the things that I find very, very helpful and important for our homeschool. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. This is simply my very favorite things that I cannot live without. The number one most important thing that I have to have to have to be a successful homeschool mom is coffee. I have to have my coffee. If you're not a coffee drinker and you want to start homeschooling, I suggest you just try it. You might find that it helps you out quite a lot. This is what I call my make it through the day latte. So after lunch is done and we're trying to wrap up our schoolwork, we typically push off the things that we don't like very much to after lunch when we have our bellies full, we've had some time, we've had a break. And a lot of times it's when the harder subjects or just the more challenging things have been put off and I have to have my make it through the day latte. So if you're not a coffee drinker, maybe just try it. You might like it. So I should probably save the absolute best thing for last, but I'm just not that way. I'm very impatient. And so I want to show you my number one most favorite have to have necessity for my homeschool. And it might surprise you. This is the one thing that I bought that when I got it and I started to use it, I really started to feel like a homeschool mom. It's like the thing that I bought that put me on team homeschool. I don't know why, but this thing comes in so, so handy to me. And it's very simple and very inexpensive. And that is my laminator machine. This thing is amazing. It takes just seconds to heat up and I run one sheet at a time through it. Also, it comes with some laminating sheets that you just pull open, you slide in whatever you're wanting to laminate and just send it through one sheet at a time. And it is wonderful. Now, I'm gonna show you some of the things that we've done with the laminating machine that have just been so helpful. So just today, I made some flashcards. I'm using these to help uh, my son and daughter recognize numbers just as a base 10, right? Okay, so I just printed these off, cut them out, and put them in a laminator sheet and laminated them. And now they are serving as flashcards so they can quickly identify what number they're looking at. And it's a very visual way of learning numbers, which I like. And this laminating machine makes it to where I can save these for my daughter, who's just now five, but I can put these away if they work and keep them forever having a laminator. Another couple of things, I've used it for a lot of things, but a couple of other things is, this is the tens house, the hundreds house, and the thousands house. So when you're learning place value, 
um, and learning what makes something a 10, a one, a hundreds of thousands. These are really, really nice to have and have laminated because we use these over and over and over. And so it's really nice to have these things laminated. And once again, we used them with my son to teach him place value and we'll be using them again with my daughter. So this is really nice to have. I have our hundreds chart, which is really nice because we can actually use dry erase marker on this hundreds chart. Anytime we're learning how to add or subtract, count ahead, count by tens, count by twos, whatever it is, we can mark all over this hundreds chart and it's just really, really helpful. Another really fun thing that we've done is maps. So I have the map of the United States and I have once again laminated it so we can mark on this with a dry erase marker and we can kind of mark out maybe the capitals when we're learning states and capitals. We can learn about rivers and we can draw the rivers on here, the Great Lakes, whatever it is we're learning about, we can pull this map out and mark over it. And the same goes for the other side, which is a world map. And so if we're learning about a specific country or area, or maybe we're learning about the, um, the sailors and the travelers, you know, we could maybe trace some routes on here talking about the trade routes and stuff. So this is really handy to have a little map. And if it's laminated, well, then we can just draw all over it and it lasts forever. The laminator is the real MVP here. I want to preface this next thing by saying we homeschool elementary or grade school children right now. So I don't have any older children. I'm very much still in learning the basics of things. And so the things that I have here that are my favorite, some of them apply very strictly to grade school and elementary school students. And so this is something that we can use from kindergarten all the way through probably fifth or sixth grade because they start learning time in preschool and kindergarten and they review it every single year and they kind of build on it, right? And so this clock comes in really handy when they're learning the difference between the hour and the minute hand or just the hours or how they count by fives. Um, whatever it is, this, this little handy clock is nice. So I can set a time and I can ask them, what time is it, you know? Or I can tell them a time and ask them to show me what time it is. This is very, very helpful. Um, my daughter will be using it this year doing kindergarten and my son is still using it in third grade. And so this is very, very handy to have. Now it doesn't have to be one exactly like this. I think this was a Melissa and Doug, no, I'm wrong. It says the learning journey. That's where this one came from. And I actually bought this at Sam's Club and it came as a pack uh, and they used to be a puzzle. There were puzzle pieces in here, but those fell out and um, we kind of lost a couple of them and we never really used them anyway. So I just took them out and used the clock function. But I know there are so, so many different clocks um, that you can buy. Amazon has several and I see them out at Mardell's and um, other stores all the time when you go to like the educational area. They'll have little clocks like this and it's really, really great to have one of these around. Okay, so one of the obvious things that you're going to need anytime you homeschool grade school students is crayons, right? You're going to need crayons. You're going to need markers. You're going to need those, right? There's lots of coloring and lots of things that you do with these in grade school. But one of the mistakes I made to begin with was just buying a bunch of packs of crayons and markers and putting them in a tub. And I found that something like this. I found that a lot of the assignments they were doing with their curriculum asked for very, very specific colors to be used for each thing. And my children were spending a lot of time trying to pick out the color they needed out of a box like this. And it was wasting so much time. And also I had the trouble with, um, we would have friends over, have a play date, or we would have some activity we were doing. And the crayons would get broken or just mixed up and lost. And we'd, we'd always end up losing a few or having a bunch of broken crayons. And so 
I decided what we would do is to have a community box of crayons or markers or whatever it is that are used for little art projects just on the side. So when we decide to color in coloring books or do a project where we need to color or if we have friends over that want to color, we have a community crayon box that we can dig in for that. But for our school work, we have designated packs of crayons that stay in their desks and they are not used by anyone else but them and or nothing else other than their schoolwork. It really is a time saver not having to dig for crayons. And another thing is that my son is actually colorblind and he can see some of the colors but not all. And so when he is doing his schoolwork, he needs to be able to have just the colors that he needs to pull them out and to look at what color it says. So that's how we attack his schoolwork. If he doesn't know what color it is, he can read the color on the crayon. And the simpler, the better. If he had to dig through a really big bucket like this to find the color that it's asking for, we would be here all day. And that's really sad and frustrating for him. So this really helps just to have a small pack of crayons that are just for school. They don't get broken, they don't go missing, just for school. So my next favorite thing has to do more with homeschooling more than one child at a time. So when we started homeschooling my son, my daughter was very small and it was really, really hard to keep her occupied and feeling like she was learning to and kind of a part of a process, but also just keeping her busy while I was doing more teaching with my son. And so one thing that a friend suggested was to have art supplies ready all the time for her. So if she wanted to do something artistic, she could do that and kind of entertain herself. And I am kind of a neat freak. The thought of letting my daughter just have all kinds of access to all kinds of art supplies I just saw, you know, like Panda Painter. You remember Lisa Frank and it was the splash paint panda bear? That's what I had pictured in my mind if I would have left art supplies out for a two-year-old. And so I did find a couple of really neat um, art supplies that I felt comfortable leaving just a stack of paper and um, these a couple of these things where she could reach them and get them anytime she wanted and I didn't have to worry. And that is... Do a dots. Don't know if you've ever seen these. I think they might use these when you play bingo. I've never been to play bingo, but it looks kind of like those little bingo stampers we used to use in school when we'd have bingo. Um, but these are wonderful. And you can buy a big set of these and they're just really cool. Um, it's really, now it's not impossible to make a mess because if you can make a mess, children are fine away, right? Um, but the tops of these, well, these have been used up a little bit but it's just like a little sponge on the top. And this is like a very, very washable paint and it just washes away with water. So these were really nice. If my daughter just got covered head to toe with do -a dot stuff or she covered the floor or wrote all over her desk, it doesn't matter. It wipes right up with water. I've not had a problem with do -a dots. Another thing is friends of ours got us some of these things called quick sticks. And this is solid, tempera paint and so these are just paint sticks and let's see if we can open one of these Ooh, the brown has not been used shocker right it's almost brand new anyway these are little paint sticks it kind of i don't know it kind of reminds me of like concealer like makeup concealer the way it is in here it's really creamy uh, but it's tempera paint and it it looks just like paint when they put it on the paper now i use cardstock I have to say that too, we use cardstock. I leave cardstock paper out for our daughter to do her art on so it doesn't bleed through like the copy paper. But these quick sticks are amazing and she loves these and I don't have to worry about what she's doing with these when my back is turned and I'm trying to teach my son. So just find some really simple art supplies. They're easy to clean and you don't have to worry about if you have little ones that need to kind of entertain themselves a little bit while you're schooling your older ones. So this is one of my absolute favorite little buckets for our homeschooling. So the next thing is manipulatives. Now, I don't know if you had these as a child. I don't remember ever using these, but I got these with a curriculum that we used at one point with my son called Matthew C. 
you get this box of manipulatives with it. Um, we didn't continue with Matthew C, and so I got rid of the books, but I've kept these manipulatives. I know a lot of people say that you can use pinto beans, you can use macaroni, you can use cars, you can use Legos, you can use all kinds of things as manipulatives when your children are learning math. But I have found there is nothing quite like these manipulatives. You have everything from little ones, you have twos, you have threes, so on and so forth, all the way up to 100 blocks. And these are amazing because we have like these 10 blocks, right? And so when they're learning their addition and subtraction, you can say, okay, what is 10 minus two, right? And so you can stack them and then they can count what's left, which is eight, right? And so I have found that these that kind of sit together. Now they don't snap together like Legos, but you can sit them on top of each other. When we've had these, the number sense that comes about from using this kind of manipulative is just irreplaceable to me. I love having these around. So when you have like your hundreds number block, when you start learning how to count by tens, you can use it and just cover them up one by one at a time, counting by tens. So many cool things you can do with these, and we use them a lot. And there are so many things that I've wanted to show my children while teaching them math that had I not had these manipulatives, I don't know how I would have done it in a way that wasn't confusing. So these are wonderful. If you wanted to check out Matthew C., I'll leave a link below. I know it's a pretty strong math program, but it just uh, it was very black and white. There were no pictures really, no colors. It was very, very um, just kind of dry. There were videos. Um, the man teaching is brilliant, teaching math. There's a lot of the tricks that we still use for addition and subtraction. And so I appreciate the tricks, absolutely. He, kind of, he knows what he's doing when he teaches math, but it's just very dry. And it was hard to get my son engaged with it. Um, and so we kind of went a different way, but I love the manipulatives and some of the tricks that he taught. For the very last one, the last but not the least, are these bulletin boards, these cork bulletin boards. Now we went a couple of years without these and I was always having a hard time with where to put things that they needed to see in front of them. So we have a chalkboard and it's actually, I'm staring at it, it's on the opposite wall of our classroom. We have a chalkboard, but it's not magnetic. And there's really no way to really stick things to it, um, not with magnets or anything. And in a regular classroom, like up here, my daughter has the letter Q. That's what she's learning to draw this week. And so typically you'll have you know, things on the board, posters in the classroom that show like the manuscript directions, how to write things, or my son up here has his spelling words posted and his cursive letters. Just the things that are very specific to them in front of their desks on these cork boards is wonderful. Another thing it does is it gives a space for the children to display the things that they've done and they're really proud of. And so when they've done a really cool art project or they did a really good job on a math paper, whatever it is that they've done that day and they wanna show dad or they wanna show it off and they're proud of it, their cork board gives them a place to put that. And we're pretty minimalist with the way that we decorate. Our homeschool room before was just overwhelming with all the posters and all of the you know, color and just stuff everywhere. It got to be too much, right? It got to be so much that nothing stood out and it all just kind of blended in. Um, but these little cork boards above their desks just gives a very central location for what they're learning right then. And um, we just love them. And I would not want to go back to doing homeschool without them. That about wraps it up. That's, like I said, not an exhaustive list of my favorite things. I have lots of favorite things. Um, I'll be doing more videos about our favorite curriculums, some tools we use to learn very specific things like reading or um, sight words or whatever it may be. We've got a lot of really cool, fun things that we've used and we've really enjoyed that we would love to share with you. Um, but these were just the very basic things. And if you're gonna start homeschooling, just a couple of tips of things to have um, in your closet or in your bin 
or whatever it is that you're gonna use, however you're gonna stay organized, just a couple of things you might wanna consider adding to the list if you're getting started. So, one bonus tip though, this is crazy. I really need to invest in scotch. I don't know who makes scotch, but um, tape. Tape, tape, and more tape. I don't know about you, but this is the commodity in this house. My children love tape. They love to do art projects, and sometimes the glue gets really frustrating because it doesn't stick. Nine times out of 10, when something calls for glue, we just end up taping it. And so, you know, if you're like me and you like tape, just stock up. The one thing that they will raid a closet for is tape. And so I always have a few more of these up on a top shelf ready for me. Um, yeah, that's just a little bonus tip for you, tape. So thank you guys so much for listening today and for hanging out with me and talking all things homeschool supplies. I'd like to know if, if you're a homeschooler and you have some favorite supplies, please, please put that in the comment section below. I would love to read what you use and what you love. You could really teach me a thing or two because I'm still finding things that I really enjoy adding into our homeschool. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to, to ask. I would love to answer any questions that I can and just to talk with you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and we'll catch you next time. Bye.